today we will discuss tactical versus Mr. Gray and that's in particular in dogs. So first describing what this means. So tactical would be that you have uh, the best equipment for a computational setting or survival setting. But Mr. Gray, what is that then? It's almost the same, but a little bit uh, different in the way it is perceived. So the tactical guy, for example, could have camouflage or tactical uh, gear and look all professional. That's, I think, the best way to describe this. Whereas Mr. Gray just blends in. So not to camouflage or something, but he just looks like any other guy. And there can also be the, the difference in approaches when you have, for example, a protection or defense oriented dog. So one example of a tactical uh, dog would be either uh, a military uh, police type of dog such as the Belgian Malinois, which is known for its tactical purpose, or uh, a band dog, which is very much uh, impregnating strong type of dog and uh, you could also think about big as some mastiff blood uh, dogs so take the example of the latter Mastino Napolitano has a completely different uh, effect on people uh, its uh, appearance as compared to for example the same Benor well, both are big, massive type of dogs. And, for example, the St. Bernard even has interactions with the English Massive. They are completely different in perception. And if you know that, there's also a dog that is known as the Moscow Watchdog who looks like a St. Bernard, but still has uh, a lot of protection drive in there and could be the best of both worlds. So a dog that has tactical possibilities in the body, the shape perceived as a uh, yeah, Mr. Grey blending in St. Bernard. Just a big dog, but not a dog for tactical means. We started with those uh, shepherds. Did you know, or do you know, that there is a dog that's closely related to the, the German shepherd dog, also known as Alsatian? And this dog uh, goes by the name of Hovermord. And it comes with it, which is black and tan of the German Shepherd, but also other colorations, including a golden coloration very close to that of the golden retriever. And this dog's name also tells you what its original purpose was. So Hoverward means garter of uh, like a sentinel of the inner places of houses and farms. So if you, have, for example, have a surrounded place around your house, that's the purpose to protect with this dog. And that could give you the appearance of a golden retriever even, with the guarding abilities of a German Shepherd dog. Another example, if you were looking for a, a dog that uh, also has much of the garden instinct as for example a bando can have but is also as laid back it's a Pyrenean Mastiff if you get one from working lines they look like an uh, overblown golden retriever again but then uh, more silky hairs and bigger of course what are livestock protection breeds same can be said if you want uh, 
a dog that looks very sleek but still has protective properties you could look for for example a uh, Rhodesian Ridgeback and it looks very friendly and it can be but also a very good protection breed because they're still bred to perform so on average it could be that you have a slightly different body shape this is not uh, the mainstream perception of a type of protection dog or the fence dog it could also be that you have a dog with a different coat which helps a lot with different colorations eh? the Moscow watchdog that looks and it, and it carries a lot of St. Bernard blood so even if you are looking like uh, looking at a smaller size dog you could get a dog uh, such as a soft coated wheat and terrier and have a dog the size of a Staffordshire Bull Terrier or American Staffordshire Terrier something in between it's also a terrier but looks completely different it looks soft and fuzzy but this was also a very good all-round farm dog I'm not saying it has the same strength or tenacity but some strains are very good and also are crossed still with working bull crosses also in the lurcher world you see sometimes lurchers that carry bull blood but also a different coat is a lot longer which could set people off that they do carry this blue blood another example is what they did to for example the Labrador retriever with the Labradoodle that dog looks completely different because of the poodle influences same could be done with other breeds as well and you don't need the Labradoodle uh, ingredients so for example the labrador and the poodle but you can just mix another dog that has a similar coat to a poodle to more of a bull and terrier or a mastiff blood dog and some dogs already have carried this uh, type of coat for example uh, some defense dogs that are more of the russian russian areas you even have a dog that completely resembles a mob, but it's a former dog protection dog, the Commodore. A very big dog, very athletic dog also for its size. And you also have dogs like the Majoritic Shepherd, that could also be uh, of interest to you. I hope this uh, video was interesting and helped you out about this tactical versus Mr. Grey appearance thing and you could decide for yourself what are the benefits so some people say that the tactical part helps because then they are perceived as uh, tactical but the Mr. Grey devotees will tell you that you, you should never take out because then you will be first have a great day this morning we will talk about Savant K9 and they breed functional Molossus functional mastiffs and why do I say this? Because most people think that Savant K9 uh, are breeding band dogs, which they are most known of. But I say functional mastiffs because they also breed uh, a certain type of bull lurcher that's more of a mastiff type than your average bull lurcher. So in my opinion, it should be more of an allowed lurcher. So the allowed gentil which was the running master was a type that was used for catching for example boar and the likes so a dog fast enough to close on close uh, the distance with the prey and strong enough to handle it and it's a little bit different than a band dog band dogs are very good at catching the prey but are not as fast as this running type of master. We also call this the light master. And they are, in its essence, 
a cross between running dog and uh, for example greyhound and more of a combat orientated dog and very often those that uh, work their dogs are using the bull cross to do this so the bull lurcher but in case of uh, savant canine they are more like the alone gentil that's also been bred by uh, other breeders that want to first uh, revigorate the English Mastiff uh, as a more healthy uh, breed, so they breed in a little bit of uh, greyhound blood, but also those who are seeking for a stronger type of, uh, a bigger type of running Mastiff. And in this case they also use uh, stag hounds, so that is already a cross between running dog and other types, and a little bit more heavier set. But in this case they are not seeking uh, ultimate uh, speed or ultimate athletic capabilities but they seek a, a fast and strong type of dog. That being said, their main breeding program is uh, involving uh, this band dog program that they have, which is uh, very well known. Also their running massives are performance orientated, which is a good thing, but their band dog program is a little bit different than that of others. It is uh, heavily focused on uh, Mastino Napolitano, so the Italian Mastiff blood, but it also incorporates other uh, blood, of course. So American Pitbull Terrier for athletic uh, prowess, but they also have bred in a little bit of Presa Canario, sometimes Presa Canario with a little bit of uh, shepherd blood, for example, they have one example that is 25% of uh, Dutch shepherds crossed with American Pitbull Terrier and the other 75% of Presa Canario, which is already a band dog on its own of performance lines. And uh, thereby they include a little bit of bull herder blood. As mentioned in other videos, the bull herder is a cross very often with uh, other uh, more combat orientated uh, dogs, especially American pit bull terriers and the likes, but sometimes also they use a mastiff and they also do that bull. In my opinion that would be more of a mastiff, but also like they mentioned the bull lurches are also in my opinion more mastiff lurches. But let's not get uh, caught on names. It's much more important that a band dog or a running mastiff is able to do what it is able to do. And a Dutch Shepherd that they chose already has for a Shepherd type of dog more bull blood than for example the Belgian Malinois, which is also a very performance oriented animal. Has. And the Shepherd also brings a lot of drive and uh, interaction with their owner. Whereas Mastiffs and Bull and Terriers are often more solo working and uh, yeah, they, they all bring their own advantages. The, the drawback of crossing all these types of dogs could be that you are losing some of the functionality because it will be scatterbred. But you can counter that by performance selection of course. Then you only have the benefits of the rich gene pool. So a long story short, this breeding program by Safe and uh, K9 is very interesting and I'm really wondering if in the future those uh, two breeding programs would not collide. So what do I mean with that is that uh, the bull lurches or they're running uh, yeah, they're running mastiffs will also be incorporated in uh, the bando program and the other way around because if you would breed a little bit of stag hound or other type of running dog together with the bando programs of course you get a running massive as, as well and if you breed a little bit of uh, running massive into your bando program you get a dog that's more athletic and faster if you already have quite massive band dogs because they 
carry this uh, heavy Mastino blood quite uh, a lot. You will be very close to uh, yeah, an average band dog in bone, for example. And as I mentioned, also their band dog program is quite heavy on this uh, massive. So I th just think that Savant K9 is really trying to revigorate the massive blood again. So by either getting them a lot faster and more nimble with the running types of a massive or more battle orientated and uh, determined with a band of program. Hope you like this video. If you do, please feel free to subscribe. Have a great day. Oh, the doggy on the leash is not a band dog or not a running massive, but just a small terrier. Spikey! This is a Petterdale type. It's also known as the black fell and used for uh, taking care of vermin, especially uh, predator vermin such as foxes, badges, but also uh, rats, raccoons, raccoon dogs, and the likes. Some even use them on coyotes, but that's another story altogether. And then you have to have multiple predator terriers because, because otherwise coyotes can easily kill them. Have a great day. In this video, we will discuss minimum size of a protection dog or in other words minimum protection dogs in size so some people tell you my yacht terrier is a perfect protection dog because he is uh, very wary of strangers and also uh, very determined and that might be and i'm not taking anything away from their bravery but there is something like physics if you have a dog of 8 to 12 kilograms, they will be easily uh, manipulated. So, for example, lift it up and smack down on the ground again, which will lead to injury. So, for example, broken bones, broken ribs, broken skull, something like that. And there is a minimum size, in my opinion, that you need for a dog to do uh, protection work. It could be different, for example, if you have that yacht area of 12 kilograms, but you have two or three of them. That will be completely different because they might be able to manipulate uh, one, but the others will still uh, do the damage, so to say. And that could be adding up, so it will halt an intruder or an attacker and there's also another thing uh, the alertness doesn't depend on the size eh? very often a dog that is smaller is more alert than a bigger type of dog also more energetic and another factor is next to alertness that doesn't depend on size do you want your dog to halt an intruder take up its time or do you want a dog that can defeat an intruder? And this is, in my opinion, an enormous difference. So, for example, if you want a dog that can defeat an intruder, a band dog type of dog, man-stopping type of dog, mastiff, molosser, could be your best pick because they have size and a lot of strength on their side. Whereas, if you want a dog that keeps an intruder busy, a smaller dog would also do quite well. Of course, as I mentioned, the smaller size also uh, offers more uh, opportunity to manipulate and injure. So, for example, the big molosser, also when it gets uh, hurt or stabbed, they still have quite a big chance to survive. Yeah? If you can see in this, um, if you can ask a hunter, for example, a very big boar, it's really hard to stop. They need a very long knife to, the, to hit the heart and to make it, uh, yeah, make it bleed out, so to say. Whereas a smaller one is very easy because there's only a small uh, amount of room. So a big amount of room with a big hook to the heart. And with a small dog, it's like this. So it would be very easy to hit the heart. And there are some examples to just name, 
then back to the question for a dog that can solely uh, have some stopping ability i think it should be around 20 kilograms minimum so and if you have a smaller dog you need more than one you need two or three if you have for example 12 kilogram dog as i mentioned earlier i think two 12 kilogram dogs can still cause uh, yeah cause trouble and will delay an intruder whereas uh, a really uh, stopping power should be 40 kilograms plus and then you could have a small band dog for example that being said the small dogs can double the alertness if you have multiple dogs for the same kilograms of dogs have a great day this morning we are going to talk about the predator defense dog which is a new american breed and is being bred to protect against predators such as wolves, bears, coyotes, bobtails, other lynxes, but also smaller predators such as foxes, raccoons, and also for feral hawks. The breeds that they use to create this breed are predominantly uh, the Rottweiler, the German breed of Molosse and the Johnson type American Bulldog which is an American breed of Bulldog and is quite massive whereas the Rottweiler is one of the smallest Mastiffs or Molosse type of dogs the American Johnson Bulldog is the biggest of all the Bulldogs there are and they use a specific line a specific line of American Bulldogs that had better characteristics as in drive and possibilities. So both the Rottweiler and the American Bulldogs are being used as guardian breeds, whereas some Bulldogs are also used as catch dogs, for example catching feral hawks. So thereby combining uh, guardian defense dog qualities against human kinds because they talk about this uh, relative defense dog as a dog to face off with predators but they also face off with humans and in that case the purpose looks a lot like that of a, a band dog and the band dog is also there to uh, deal with man or beast and to protect against those that bring harm so that also gives you a uh, perspective if you want something else along the similar lines and protection against uh, humans what pilots are uh, a very good choice if you get them for working lines and why is that the case? Because you get the protection properties of a guard dog mixed with a little bit more laid back character as compared to, for example, uh, a shepherd type of uh, guardian dog. And also you have the size, you have man stopping ability. And the size of a Johnson Bulldog on average is uh, similar even bigger than that of a Rottweiler. So, also, these Johnson type Bulldogs have uh, great stopping power. So, that brings you to the uh, topic what other breeds did they use? They wanted to uh, increase the grit and therefore they uh, bred in working type uh, American Pitbull Terrier, which is the true gladiator dog, but they use uh, extra large lines so therefore they also bred in a lot of weight pulling uh, pitbull type of dogs in my opinion I like the heteroses so they have uh, increased the gene set still the dogs look uh, 
be dominant with Rottweiler type. So if you like Rottweilers, this could be an interesting alternative. But in my opinion, there might be some better choices. And I will explain why. Rottweiler is uh, a dog that is suitable for protection. But lately, this dog breed has a low percentage of uh, working specimens. And there are other breeds. And they use this XL uh, pit-built area type to do not give away too much of the size <coughs> and the size range of this uh, predator defense dog is between uh, 100 and 160 pounds so about 45 to 72 kilograms which is quite big to begin with so that's the point and there are other types that are being worked more consistently that have similar uh, attributes as the rock rider. For example, the Bourbo. The Bourbo is also already bred to deal with human threats, but also animal threats. So, for example, baboons, leopards, hyenas, and the likes. So, that could be a better choice. Or, go with, for example, a livestock protection breed that has been developed to protect against wolves and bears predominantly. So for example, if you want a shorter coat, there are dogs like the Alibi that also due to this uh, very uh, thick, strong skull and big power and size, bigger than the Rottweiler even. So that could be <coughs> an alternative source of Rottweiler and then being uh, dealing with uh, some predators, if you want to have a, a Johnson type of bulldog, of course you get the biggest type of bulldog, but also that with the least drive and the least athletic, athletic uh, properties. Normally a cat, uh, American bulldog, would be Scott type or Margarita Painter, which are far more athletic and look a lot more like a Dogo Argentino than a Johnson. Bulldog. Dogo Argentino is another dog breed that is, has been developed to deal with, for example, predators such as Puma, but especially with uh, hawks. So my worries are that both the Johnson and the uh, Rottweiler carry too little uh, prey drive, and also uh, they are not as athletic as they should be. So therefore, if you use another factor you will be almost producing a scatterbred dog that could be very healthy but also would be hard uh, pressed to uh, deliver uh, with consistency the type of pups that you want so for example if you would go with Alibi which is a livestock protection breed and uh, Scott type American Bulldog you would have similar size a lot more athletic capabilities and a lot more drive. And also Bulbo could be a superior choice, even increasing bulk as compared to for example Rottweiler. Another thing is uh, there are many good bando programs. For example American Sentinel K9 that are specifically developed to deal with uh, threats being human or hunting hawks so they are not as much uh, to be deal with animals that come, uh, come on your turf but their protective nature their hunting drive as well as uh, their predator uh, disposal skills and strength would be a very good choice and these uh, dogs are bred uh, true and very much look like an XL American Pitbull Terrier of game lines. So not so much weight pool but game lines and they uh, are in the bottom range of this predator defense dog already. It could be a far better choice also if you would look to, uh, towards XLRs, American Pitbull Terriers.
especially wade pool ones. So those are some of the factors uh, to consider. That being said, I like the initiative a lot, but I think it could be executed far better. And therefore I gave some uh, pointers. I hope that you like this video. If you do, let me know if you have some additional information that you want to uh, share or why these choices were made over the choices that I propose. Please let me know. Have a great day.